Hello guys, we're gonna talk about The Tiger by William Blake. I have chosen it because it is a very interesting poem, a very rich one, and we're gonna analyze its structure, its themes, a lot of things. Next, please. This is our index, okay? Firstly, we're gonna read the poem, then we will, go, we will, will analyze its structure, its themes. Uh, Victor will make a comment about a series called The Mentalist, which makes a reference, a very interesting reference to the poem. Um, after this, I will read a translation that I did last year as a kind of homage to one of my favorite poems. And at the end, we're going to conclude talking about our opinions about the poem and our opinions about the motivation that is, that is so famous, so important poem. So that's it, guys. So let's present the poem, right? Uh, if you can, if you want, you can um, hear me or read with me. So, tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burn the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare says the fire? And what shoulder and what art? could twist the sinews of thy art. And when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet? What the hammer, what the chain? In what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread, dread grasp? There its deadly terrors clasp. When the stars threw down their spears and, wa and water heaven with thy with their tears, did his mire his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye there framed thy fearful symmetry? Very interesting, isn't it? So now let's talk a little bit about the structure of this wonderful poem. So basically it is formed by six stanzas, each one with four, li four lines, right? It follows the scheme of rhymes A-A-B-B, -B, but a curiosity here, it has two I rhymes. Uh, we're going to see what I rhymes is in the next slide. And it also has eight or seven poetic syllables in each line. Next, please. So here we have an example of the poem. The first stanza. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? So the, the scheme of rhymes, A, A, bright rhymes with night, and B, B, I, I rhymes with symmetry. And here I could say to you what an I rhyme is. An I rhyme happens when two words in the poem, right, which form a rhyme, the rhyme of the poem, are written similarly, but are spoken, are pronounced differently. It also, in, it doesn't form a, a full rhyme, okay? It is possible that at the time, in the period of time that William Blake lived, these two words were pronounced more similar, in a more similar way, but today it doesn't happen anymore. So, for example, um, the first sentence, the first line of the poem, Tiger, tiger, burning bright. It has seven syllables, as I have said. Let's count. Tiger, tiger, burning bright. Seven, five plus two. And we have in the last, in the fourth line of the first stanza, eight syllables. Could frame thy fearful symmetry. Five, five plus three, eight syllables. Next, please. And the poem is also composed in the trochaic style, which means that its rhythm, rhythm alternates between stressed and unstressed syllable. And it is a very interesting uh, strategy of writing that Blake used because this pattern mimics the sound of a hammer hitting a piece of metal, which is a very interesting, very important, I'm sorry, important theme inside of the poem. So, um, And a lot of lines inside of the poem have this rhythm, the same the rhythm of a, a blacksmith hammering metal. And also there is an important thing that we should note. 
uh, the repetition of the, interrog the interrogative pronoun, what, serves to emphasize this questioning aspect of the poem, right? The, the word what appears uh, an amount of 18 times inside of the poem. So it is a big question. It is a big uh, reflection about it. What, 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 what is it? What, what are, what is the tiger, etc. Here we have uh, two examples of the, the poem. For example, about the truque style, the, the rhythm that I've said. Tiger, tiger, burning bright. Do you see? There is deadly terrors clasp. So it's very uh, similar to the sound. Ping, ping, ping. Pretty interesting. And an, as an example of the repetition of the interrogative pronoun. What the hammer, what the chain, what the anvil, what dread grasp. That's it. And some things that we can notice uh, around the, the poem, uh, we, have, we, we brought some themes to talk about. So the first one is the nature of evil. So the tiger expresses one of the man's greatest questions. If God exists, it was him that created evil or the evil was created by another po powerful being or evil was created by God and is beyond our mundane comprehension so uh, the majority of Blake's artistic creations, the poems and other things, circle around these religious themes. So the presence of God, evil, good and bad. And um, to him, body and mind, innocence and experience should be balanced inside man. And one could not overcome the other. So it is possible uh, to imagine that to Blake, good and evil are fundamental aspects of our lives and that we should embrace them. So we have good and we have bad inside our body, our soul, but we have to live with them, with these opposites. And we can see um, these thing in these parts of the text. What immortal hand or eye could or dare frame thy fearful symmetry? So we have the first stanza and the last stanza. What immortal hand or eye could frame? And the last, what immortal hand or eye dare frame? So we have the, uh, the creation of something symmetric and fearful at the same time. The tiger can be, uh, can be seen as something beautiful, good, but something fearful. And did he who made the lamb make thee? So the same God who created the lamb, something good, something peaceful, created this, this, the same tiger, this something, this beautiful thing, but fearful, hateful, something bad. So we have these questions that Blake, that Blake brings us about the good and the bad. So, something, uh, some another thing that he, he brings us is the contrary of uh, nature of things. So the poem all also explores the paradoxical aspects of our world. So the tiger is fearful, but also symmetrically perfect. It is a ferocious killing machine, but also one of the most beautiful animals in nature. In the poem, these contradictory elements are displayed in a more symbolic way. Like uh, the animal is burning bright, beautiful to see, the speaker questions, uh, like it's beautiful to see, but it's dangerous when we come close to it. So the uh, so um, the speaker will question this burning bright, right? Uh, like we we'll question about deep, about the deeps, about the skies, meaning that such such an animal could live in a deep and do its ferocity, something hide, it could live, hide between the others, or in the sky due to its natural beauty and grace. The tiger could live alone in the deeps, could live in the sky, open to see. Uh, it's symmetric, it's, it's beautiful, it's beautifully symmetric, or, and it's something fearful, burns beautifully, but it can hurt us. And another thing is the artistic creation. So in the poem, we have what hand there says the fire and what shoulder and what art. 
we have some some keywords as well like frame art twist hammer chain furnace anvil grasp and clasp so tiger the poem uh, talks about the process of creating art specifically new art artistics products products uh, the speaker maybe question what the hand there says the fire alluding to the myth of prometheus uh, who had stolen the fire from the Olympus to give it to mankind, therefore helping to create the world as we know. Uh, having this in mind, Blake's poem can also be about the boldness necessary to think differently. One must steal the fire and maybe the, uh, be punished to make real art. Also, the poem describes a series of word, a series of words related to blacksmithing. So we can see the process of creating this beast, this beautiful beast. We have the sound of metal. Someone's creating something. We have the the poem. It, it's completely it's like a chant. We can we can see the rhythm. So we have someone creating the tiger. We have the the art artistic process of this art and some other things that we can see throughout the the whole poem it's what does tiger means what is this tiger we can like i think that the tiger can represent us the humankind so the tiger just like us we can be good we can be bad we can be both because no one is a hundred percent something always, just like the tiger. We are something beautiful. Uh, like we have our lives, we can create more life. So it's we are something good. But the uh, at the same time, as we can create something, we can kill something. So we are good, we are bad, we are beautiful, we are fearful. So another thing about this creation is the body parts that Blake puts in the text, like in the poem. Um, Blake says um, about, talks about the, the hands of the tiger, the shoulders of the tiger, the, the feet of the tiger. Did you notice that he says hands? But does the tiger have hands? No, the tiger have paws. So we can make this connection. Hands, we have hands, the humankind have hands. So the tiger can be like, can be represented as the humankind. And the fire can represent our soul, our spirit, our fire. And we have a reference about The Mentalist. Uh, the Mentalist, it's a TV series that I really love. And when I was watching, like in the second season of, of the series, we have the presence of the first stanza of the tiger, in which was given to Jane. Jane is this good guy here. The, he can be represented by the good guy. He works with the police. He try, he, so, he solves crimes. With, and we have Red John, the villain, the good guy, the bad guy, because he kills people. So he does really bad things throughout the whole, the, the whole series. So these two characters have the relationship uh, like one wants to kill the other, but Red John had plenty of opportunities to kill Jane, but he doesn't. He just doesn't kill. He wants him to suffer. So black poems, that's where black poems fits. Could the bad exist without the good? Is there anything 100% good? or 100% bad. Is there, uh, does Red John think that he wouldn't have a reason to exist if Jane wasn't there to chase him? Um, and we can also see that Jane is portrayed as the good guy, but he intends to kill Red John. He doesn't want to capture him. He, he really wants to kill. So does it mean that Jane is not that good? doesn't mean that Red John is not that bad. So we have all of these questions about why Red John gave this stanza, this specific stanza, this specific poem to Jane. And I think it's, it's this, Red John wouldn't have a, a, a reason to live if he doesn't have Jane. 
<laughs> this is the reference that we can make between these two, two the, between the poem and the series. So guys, now I'm going to read the translation that I've done. Um, I really love this poem, so I tried to make a kind of homage, and obviously it was very interesting, very nice uh, search about it and learn about it and make my own version, version of it. So I'm going to read it to you. Tigre, por William Blake. Tigre, tigre, brilho ardente das florestas no poente, qual imortal mão ou guia fez terrível simetria. Em qual abismo estelar queima eterno teu olhar? Em que asa usa o valente, mão que toma o fogo ardente? Em qual braço de artesão fez pulsar teu coração? Diz-me que medonho ser fez teu coração bater? Que martelo, que corrente fez da brasa tua mente? Em qual forja, em qual mesa afiou-se a tua presa? Sobre estrelas fulgurantes, céu de lágrimas brilhantes, ele te olha e sorri? Fez o cordeiro e a ti? Tigre, tigre, brilho ardente das florestas no poente. Qual imortal mão ou guia ousou tua simetria? Uh, so, about our conclusion, about the, the poem, right? We try to understand how, how can a, a simple poem like this, a very short poem, be so popular, so easily remembered. A lot of people uh, knows the first lines by heart. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. A lot of people know it. It's 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 a reality. So it's because of 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 the tiger, which is a very beautiful animal. It's because of its its simplicity, and we we thought a few reasons for this, and I'm gonna show it to you. The first reason we we thought is, in fact, its simplicity. Its theme is pretty simple. Its stanzas are pretty simple and its lines are pretty simple. It has short lines, short stanzas. It is, it is an overall sh very short poem and it's very easy to remember. Could Reading it a few times will certainly remember a lot of passages. But, and it is interesting to notice that the poem is also dual. It is also um, paradoxical because it is simple. But at the same time, it is very immensely rich. Rich regarding what? Its symbols, its meanings, and its interpretations. It has a lot of interpretations. We have just uh, explored a few of them. There is a lot, a lot of interpretations. And I've brought the ones we have talked about it, uh, the ones we have talked about, and a kind of extra one that I've discovered kind of yesterday. So the nature of evil, right? What is the tiger? Does God created the tiger? Did God create the tiger? And another theme, God's mysterious design. Should we comprehend God's designs? Should we comprehend God's motivations? Maybe we should, maybe we shouldn't. Uh, the challenges of artistic creation. Should an artist stole the fire and risk being punished or risk being, I don't know, being very, very succeed in creating something new, some new form of art? It is also a question. And Blake doesn't, doesn't give us the answer. He only questions, question after question. What, 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 what? And the answer is up to us, the reader. And the extra interpretation, which I found crazy interesting. Uh, the, the, this poem can be interpreted as the fear and as a manifestation of the fear of the industrial revolution at the period Blake wrote in. Because we can see the tiger, which is in the poem, metaphorically made of metal, right? It is made of metal, it is moved by fire, moved by steam, it is very dangerous, very, I don't know, it, it emanates this kind of heat, this kind of bright, which is characteristic of machines when we think about it. So it is really an endless piece of art. I put it on the slide, it is endless piece of art. It can be analyzed in a lot of different perspectives. It will never, uh, become empty never 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 so it was a real pleasure to study more about it i i 
thought I knew something about it, but doing this work, I've discovered I knew nothing. Pretty much like Jon Snow, I knew nothing. <laughs> so that's it, guys. And when we discussed, we brought a lot of more interpretation. We yeah, connected exactly. our interpretations. We, bring, exactly. we thought about new ones. So we every time that we read, we will find something new. Something new. That's it. Uh, these are our references. And thank you for your attention. Thank you for your attention. Everything. So hope you have enjoyed. Hope you have enjoyed. Bye-bye.